Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. In today's episode, we're gonna meet a traveling artist and graphic designer who built her own tiny home on wheels inside of a pink bus. This is the longest I've been in a house in my entire adult life. I'm so happy with this bus. In this tiny tour, Rita's personality really shines, not only through her artwork, but also through this unique home that she's curated herself. And if you like videos like this one, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new episode. But right now, let's dive right in and take a tour of Rita's bus. I'm Rita, this is Inanna, this is Dragon, and this is my home Wilbur. Before van life, I was living in an apartment in Dallas. I worked on the engineering floor at a software firm. I thought that it was the type of job I really needed to have so that I could keep climbing the ladder and getting the job that would eventually make me enough money where I was impressed with myself or that my family was impressed with me or something. I could work remotely sometimes. So I would just like take my Jeep out, take these road trips, pretending like I was still just at home in Dallas and just not telling anybody that I was living entirely in my Jeep living out of a two-door Jeep Wrangler with two dogs and sleeping in a hammock every night, trying to work at a whole corporate job was like probably not really gonna work forever. So I wanted a rig that I could tow my Jeep behind and that I could have a whole desk at. I spent five weeks and two days building the bus in a parking lot of a Masonic temple. And there's like 50 old men that would just like come in and out of the parking lot being like, what are you doing today, Rita? <laughs> While I wrenched away on a, a pink bus. This is the Bible of an engine. This is a, a Ford Bible. Mine is clearly very well loved and very well used but I don't think I would have had the confidence to do it if I didn't have this book. And I've learned so much about it that I feel like I could confidently rebuild this bus even better again. Total cost of the bus was just under $9,000. I've been living full time on the road for almost three years now. I'm so happy with this bus. Welcome to the outside of Wilbur. He is a Ford shuttle bus. He's a 2001 Triton V10. He's about 14,873 pounds and 20 feet long, eight feet wide. He gets about 10 miles per gallon and it doesn't really fluctuate much with him towing my Jeep or just rolling with him alone. Wilbur came disgustingly moldy green and white when I got him. I painted Wilbur pink. It took me about six hours to do from start to finish, including sanding and all. So Wilbur's first set of doors were the traditional bus doors and they had the handle that pulled and opened. The handle on mine broke when I was driving 65 miles an hour and the doors just opened up and let trash and dog leashes and a couple other things out into the highway. I am a big fan of this front door. I got this from Habitat for Humanity for 60 bucks. The front door actually just fit perfectly. So when I first got on the road, I lived in my two-door Jeep Wrangler for six months. This was part of my kitchen build. I will set this thing up in the morning and have coffee outside sometimes. I like that I was able to bring a little bit of the Jeep build into the bus build. So this area is just a lot of extra storage for me. One of the features I love about this bus is how many doors it has. It came with a wheelchair lift in the back out here. And I love that these doors open up so it's just like a huge open space. And it's just so like light and breezy on a good day like this. This is also where I shower. I have a shower tent if I'm in like a more public setting or if there's like a lot of campers out. I have a Camplux propane water heater here. I keep all of my shower supplies here. It's 12 volt and it turns on and heats up pretty quickly. I can take this off or I can just stand under it and have a shower outside. I have a, a six gallon water tank for this and I'll get four good showers out of that. So we're in the back of the bus now. 
I love to collect stickers from places that I've traveled. A lot of these stickers were from when I was back in the Jeep and I knew the entire time when I was collecting all these stickers that one day I'd have a rig that I would put all the stickers all over the back. So I weighed my options pretty heavily on how I wanted to get onto the roof. I didn't have a ladder for the first little while on the road and I ran into a problem of not being able to get onto the roof where all my solar panels are. So I drilled a couple holes in the top of the bus. I think they're like three inch long bolts with eye hooks at the end. And I just hung this little ladder down here, which is so cute. And I kind of thought it was like a temporary $15 fix, but it's been a couple years now and it's really cute and it works pretty well. And then I'm able to also store my, my bike on the back of the, of the door here, which is really convenient. So on my roof, I have 400 watts of solar and I have it tied back into my alternator too. If it's ever cloudy or something, just like go into town, go to a store and come back and it's like charged for a day. So this is my board. Since this is fiberglass, I was able to just like drill inch and a half long screws into this. And then I have this little, I think this is like just garage hardware, but I love that I can see it right out of my mirror. It doesn't obstruct anything. This is my Jeep River. Uh, I actually lived out of her for six months before building the bus. I love this Jeep more than life itself, possibly more than Wilbur. She can take me to some pretty gnarly places and I just really love off-roading. I love driving her. So she's pretty crucial to tow behind Wilbur and have her with me all the time. So I flat tow my Jeep behind the bus, but it takes me about two minutes and 20 seconds on a fast day to rehitch. All right, so let's head inside. All right, so we're inside my bus now. Up at the front, we have kind of the cabin. It really just feels like driving a pickup truck with a giant house on the back of it when you're up here. You'll notice my dashboard is pink and the steering wheel and the door. When I first bought the bus, it was like really sticky and gross and weird up here. I actually just like rattle can spray painted it. And then I just have shoe storage up here. It's kind of just a catch all for everything when I first walk into the house. So over here I have a little bit of extra storage over my windshield. When I first got this, it was just a lot of insulation and wiring. I didn't need most of that, so I took a jigsaw to it and cut this hole out, eventually framed it out, and I've been able to use this as my library. I had to build a little platform on the bottom so that everything could stay a little bit evenly, but surprisingly, nothing really ever falls out of here. So if you look up, you'll notice my ceiling is made out of pallet wood. I used a jigsaw and chopped them all up. I love the look of it being just so ragtag and jumbled together. I was a little bit worried about how dirty they all were, but it's it's honestly worked out and my house smells like Home Depot most days, which is one of my favorite smells. Works out pretty well. So over here I have my coffee station. Um, I am a big fan of coffee. It's kind of a routine in the morning. I'll usually have one of my friends over in the morning. We'll have coffee together. And I have probably five different ways to make coffee in the bus. I end up with all my coffee mugs over here hanging up. So as we come down in the bus is my art studio and this is really the most important part of the bus for me. The biggest pain point for me living in the Jeep was not having a steady workspace, enough storage for all my art supplies, stable enough power in a Jeep to be able to power my computers that I do graphic design on and a place to put drying paintings. Creating the art studio on the bus has been one of the most fun and most changing things about it. I tend to switch focuses really frequently. I paint murals on the road, so I need enough storage for three huge Tupperware containers, and I need gigantic paintbrushes, I need tiny paintbrushes for my oil paintings, I do watercolors all the time, and I've had to have so much varying storage out here that has really shifted around pretty frequently. It's been really nice to be able to create a space that I can spread out as much as I want, I can be indoors but also have good lighting inside, and be protected from things like the wind and rain. My mom bought me this little cup holder. So this is one of the only like glass or ceramic items in the bus that I have kept and I cannot believe it's been held on for almost three years with a little bit of Velcro on the bottom. Um, and it makes me really happy. She recently passed away and it's so nice to be able to like see a little bit of home and a little bit of family on the road every day. I have a lot of random hooks around here that I'll hang like wet pallets on. And I also have a warning for any of my friends who come into my bus not to wear anything white or that they don't want to get paint on because as you can tell from me, you don't last 15 seconds in this bus without touching something that has wet paint on it. 
Moving to the back of the bus, we have my bedroom slash living room. I have a couch down here uh, during the day, and then at night I can fold it out into a queen size bed. I don't always fold it out at night. It's more than enough space for the three of us. You can fit a good five girlfriends on the couch here. It really makes a nice open space for hanging out in my art studio, and I have friends in here. And I just absolutely love how many doors are back here. It really creates like such a living room vibe. And during the day when it's sunny, I usually park my bus this way facing the sun. So in the morning, I can open my curtains back here and like watch the sunrise through my windows. So I have my AC unit up here and it's not really common that people who get shuttle buses actually keep them in or ever get any use out of them. But I use mine a lot. My dog is pretty elderly and she can't really handle heat very well so I'll just turn on my truck for 10 minutes run this for two minutes the whole place is cooled down and my dogs are so much more comfortable they both really love bus life Inanna would be really happy as long as there's a couch and air conditioning pretty much anywhere she could ever go and Dragon really loves bus life because he gets so much exercise I really love having film photographs, so I keep this little Polaroid camera with me, and when I'm in a really special place or with really special friends, I love to take a picture. A few of my favorite ones have made it to the board. I have my parents' house in Virginia, dragon swimming next to a waterfall in Bend, and Nana on the beach. So I used to work with RPM 3D printing in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and I did wildlife rehabilitation with them. And this was the first animal we ever worked with, was a, a possum named Jenny. We built a wheelchair for her, so she was allowed to be a disability ambassador uh, in elementary schools. So over here in the middle of the bus, I have my closet. It actually started off as a bathroom, but like a lot of other van lifers who built bathrooms or showers in their rigs, it ends up just being used for storage mostly. There was an entire functioning shower in here. My toilet was in here. I think about a year ago, I converted it back into a closet. And since then, I've converted my toilet into a seating area and um, the shower has moved to an outdoor shower. It's pretty nice though, having uh, hanging storage for all of my clothes. I'm not really good at folding clothes, so I love having as much hanging storage as I have here. So coming up to the front of the bus, we have my kitchen. One of my favorite things about my kitchen is how many little tiny spots there are that you can see my art. I built this extra countertop here, so this expands. It's really good for pizza night or extra cooking space when I'm cooking with friends. Almost all of my kitchen cabinet, the actual structure of it, are all pallet wood. I kind of chose a little bit of the stronger pieces. I love having these little hammocks throughout the bus because I can kind of use it as a catch-all and have produce up here that I can see really visually, reminding me like what I need to cook this week, that I should probably eat some fruit. When I was considering what type of sink I wanted and I was working on the build, I took this bucket from my parents' farmhouse and I was just using it kind of as a catch-all and like physically using it as a sink while I was building. And I kind of grew so attached to it. I was like, there's no reason I can't just cut a hole in the bottom of this and use an RV sink drain. So I cut the kitchen counter to fit this. It's really nice. I can take it in and out if I want to do something outside with it. And then my water storage is kind of unusual. I did initially actually have a real sink faucet here and it works just fine, but I, I would occasionally, when going off-roading, I would occasionally like, uh, get a leak and it would like ruin my week and I really didn't like having the giant water tanks underneath that I had to physically move to empty or to refill so I feel like this which holds two gallons and I just refill it from tanks that I have in the Jeep so I can take the Jeep back into town at any point and refill all my water without having to move the entire bus. So one thing that is kind of a pain point in the bus actually is my floors. There's a fuel pump hatch at the back of the bus that I've floored over, not knowing that I would need to access that on a regular basis. So I think if I were to do it over, number one, I would absolutely not floor over the fuel pump hatch. And then secondly, I don't think I would go with LVP again. I had, I had heard a lot of people that were really impressed with it before, but it's not very waterproof. It's really easy to damage them. I'm not in love with them. I would probably just put like shag carpet down next time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I have no idea.
I hope that anybody who watches this walks away feeling like they can do it if this is what they want to do or if they want to try something new. Nothing's really that hard. I don't recommend starting brain surgery tomorrow, but like short of that, you can probably figure out how to do anything that you actually want to learn how to do. This is the longest I've been in a house in my entire adult life. I'm so happy with the bus that I just kind of want to rearrange and like give it a fresh redesign. If this thing absolutely died tomorrow and I couldn't fix it, I would probably just go buy another one off the same lot that I got this one from and start over, do the same exact thing. <laughs> Thanks for watching this week's video. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you soon with another tiny or unique home tour.